Hello. Can you tell us Yeah, basically, uh, um, I used to be in a group called the Meds Collective. We were together for about five years. It was childhood friends. And at the end of 2014, um, we kind of stopped writing, recording and performing as a group together. And after that, I recorded some solo material for about a year. Uh, literally no one kind of knew about it. And during this year, sort of went back to the material, reviewed it, and now I'm um, really just kind of trying to uh, work as a solo artist at the moment. So uh, releasing an, al an album very soon. Yeah, it's on Monday, isn't it? The yeah, Monday. The album's called Reckless Caution. Yeah, it's got 13 <laughs> tracks on it. I was about to say 13 albums, but 13 tracks on it, yeah. which really is a product of music that I wrote and recorded with a producer called Oliver Radio. So uh, yeah, oh. keeping very, very busy at the moment. So what do you think you've learned through the process of production, songwriting, album? For me personally, I think uh, it was growing confidence because whilst I was with the group, it was a really, really, really good experience, but I guess I was kind of like the quieter sort of member of the group and I probably didn't have as much confidence as I do now and then at the time of recording the material it, because there was no pressure because no one knew that I was, I was doing it I gradually just grew a lot of confidence and I think probably one of the main lessons I learned was just being, being truth to myself in terms of the music I wrote was music that I was into, music about my life, experiences and observations and really it was just kind of growing more confidence as a solo artist. Basically, yeah, basically, yeah, because I'd never imagined writing, recording solo material whilst I was in the group because it just wasn't in my mindset. And then it's sort of identity. Basically, yeah. So it was only when I, I was recording with Oliver Radio, who was the producer on the uh, album, that I kind of found my identity a little bit. And I'm really, really, really happy with the results of that. So, do you have a favourite track? My favourite tracks, uh, I haven't got a favourite track particularly, but I think my favourite tracks is a track called London City, which was the second single from the album. And if I had to pick two others, perhaps a track called Welcome and Classic Rap. Now, you just recently on tour Yes and no. We had a tour planned, but because of sort of personal reasons on Tony's side, we didn't do the tour in the end. But I did a show in London, which went really amazing, and the dates are being rescheduled until next year. So watch the space. Um, but yeah, that was an absolutely amazing experience. An absolutely amazing experience. I was really, really, really scared beforehand because it was the first time I was really going out performing by myself in terms of a whole set of songs because in the past I was just kind of either with the boys in the group or I was kind of performing one song where I was promoting the singles an 80s by London City and I still music. This was actually a bit of a set. So Did I was you really exposed, like not having a band or Definitely, 100% and that is why I was really, really, really scared because you know, I rehearsed quite a bit for it and every single mistake I may have made in rehearsals, that was kind of a sticking point for me. I was like, oh god, it's gonna, that's how it's going to be in the show, everyone's going to hate it. But even when I kind of polished the show um, to the standard that I wanted, then it was a fear of, will people like it? I know people kind of knew my old group and they seem to like the old group, which is me by myself. I've never really come out like this before. And yes, yeah, very, very, very vulnerable. Felt quite lonely actually at the start, but <laughs> once I came off stage, I felt absolutely amazing. I was relieved that I did it, but um, I was glad to get a, a, a positive reaction from it. And it kind of, um, yeah, it was, it was a real personal kind of lesson for me in a way to say, you know, just throw myself out there, you know, because if I kind of had the choice, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to do that. But where I'd kind of said that I would do it, and, you know, I couldn't kind of pull it out of it at the last minute. It's so good to, It's good to push yourself. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, de de you learn yeah, definitely. But I remember being at home um, before kind of getting a taxi down to the venue and being really like, oh my God, what am I doing? This is going to be disastrous. And it wasn't. And I was, yeah, and I'm, and I'm really, really, really grateful to Tony for 
given me the opportunity to uh, showcase my solo material at his gig. That's, that's a great opportunity for you. Yeah, I was really flattered because I was literally was with fa friends and family in my garden one summer's day. <laughs> so like a poet, but one summer's day and then I literally just got a text from Tony saying, listen, do you want to do some stuff with my solo pieces? And to an extent, I thought I'm not going to answer that now because that's really overwhelming. Uh, but yeah, I decided to do it and I've really, really got to give a lot of thanks to Tony for whatever reason and I can't, I can't explain why, but he's always been really, really good. Well, I hope so. I hope, I, I hope so. But, um, I'm, you know, I'm really flattered and honoured that you asked me to do it. Because I expect a lot of artists would have loved to do it. And so this, yeah, for the you know, sake that he asked me, I was really, really flattered. And um, I'm kind of good at Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're exactly right. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. I thought, you know, I was thrown in the deep end to an extent. And uh, yeah, that's really spared me on to do more stuff. And it really helped me professionally and personally. <laughs> an interesting fact about myself. I play bass. I don't know if that's an interesting fact. Oh, uh, uh, what else do I do? I play football a lot. I cycle a lot. And sometimes I think I'm socially awkward because I've got a weird shyness about me that I constantly struggle to kind of get over. I don't know if that's a. I don't know if that's a uh, an interesting fact, but that's what I do. Yeah, I play. So I play. I play bass. My music taste is oddly weird, which is probably reflected in the album, but they're my interest in fact. So, thinking about um, that, that the performance, yeah. did you play your music stuff? Yeah, I certainly did, yeah. I played really well. I played, um, well, I performed two singles that people may have heard already, which was an 80s vibe in London City, which I've been promoting um, throughout the year, but there were tracks that I had never performed before that um, were on the new album so people didn't know it and that was part of the, uh, the reason I was so worried about it but it, it went really really well and um, yeah I was really happy. Um, really happy. Yeah, yeah I, I really liked performing a track called Welcome. Um, that's a really uplifting soul funk kind of hip-hop track that I started the show with but I really liked performing that and then I performed a track called Car Train which is to uh, get quite a positive reaction as well so that was really really um, good so, yeah. those two tracks yeah. um, so the other side is you were DJing yes yes how did you get into that? I got into that by knowing the owner of Sonic Radio and he asked me if I'd be interested in doing a show on his station and again, and this might, it's a bad trait of mine, but again I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. But I did it and went into the studio and recorded the first show. The first few shows for me were quite nerve wracking because, again, I was never used to doing stuff by myself as such. I was always with my mates doing uh, stuff with the group. Um, but yeah, the, the more I did it, the more I got comfortable with it, as you do with anything in life, I guess. And um, yeah, I've been doing it for about two years now. So, uh, but that's how I got into it. Yeah, 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 my, yeah, my bad, I was just saying earlier, my bad trait is I perhaps don't chase things as much as I should a lot of the time. So. A lot of the benefits that I've had through doing music are people kind of getting me onto their projects or asking me to do stuff, which has been really, 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 really nice. Yeah, connections really good. Cool. Yeah, but I've been doing it for two years, and now you know it's kind of like second nature to start getting out. Are you going to be doing any gigs to promote your album? Yeah, the first major gig is on March the fourth, two thousand and seventeen. Yeah, March the fourth, two thousand. 2017, which is in a nightclub called the Moritz Nightclub in Soho, and that's going to be a, a showcase of my whole album and some other surprises and bits and pieces that I'll be doing. Um, but in the warm up to that, I will be performing a host of other kind of warm up shows to that, which is yet to be announced. But it will all be <coughs> trying to, <laughs> trying to. But that's, um, but yeah, so that's the kind of plan and the date. 
and locations and all the details will be on my official website at markantonymusic.net. But the only one that's confirmed at the moment is March 4th, 2017, at my table where it's playing coming to in London. Yep, I have a Twitter page which is mark underscore eight official. That's my page, mark underscore eight official. I've got Mark Anthony Music, which is my Facebook page. I have just a SoundCloud page, which is Mark Anthony Music. But I always try and get people to my official website, which is markanthonymusic.net, and all of the links to my social media uh, on that website. And I have a YouTube page as well, which is Mark Anthony Music. But yeah, markanthonymusic.net is my main website, and all the links to my social media are from that website. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I really like uh, Terry Walker. She has been a signed artist in the past. She performs a lot of R&B, neo, soul type of music that she's done at the moment. I really like her. There's an artist called Daily who I uh, really like. He does kind of pop, jazz, soul, and he did some stuff with the Gorillas, which I thought was absolutely amazing and his solo stuff is really good so daily and oh god uh, um, Rags Rudy they're a star band that I've had a pleasure of interviewing on Shorty Radio I thought they're really really cool and oh god there's so many and I thought that I've just had a mind blank and Alfie Jackson who was in a band called The Holloways who um, is someone I kind of Talk to a lot of okay, Alfie Jackson, yeah. check out his solo stuff. He was in a band called The Holloways, who were um, perhaps most famously known for Generator. What do you think of like, the people who are I think it, I love, absolutely love unsigned music, I love unsigned acts, and without um, sounding like I'm talking neg negatively about the X Factor, I do think that more unsigned bands need to be need to come to the forefront because I think that the, the charts, there's some really good stuff in the charts, but I do think the charts have perhaps been dominated by talent shows and manufactured acts as opposed to real unsigned acts breaking through. You know, I like nothing better than going to a pub or a bar to you know, unsigned acts. I think that they are awesomely talented, a lot of them are awesomely talented, and I think that a lot of them, because they haven't had the, you know, the sort of record company backing uh, such as exposure I think a lot of them go on and the wider world is okay so I'm going to um, find a place in the room <laughs> um, this is Reed Foster ok so you can do it in the way yeah yeah so he's 17 I take that <laughs> <laughs> that is so unfair I would say E17 great oh sorry E17 right but saying that, I, I, I like to take that stuff, so it's kind of a rate and rate. Am I allowed to say that, or do I have to say rate and rate? I'll say rate and rate. Um, if I said that when I was 14, I'd get beaten up, but I'd say rate and rate. And you've got a song about the 80s, Rate. I sound like I'm rating everything, yeah, but I will stay something. No, this is really related to something you've just mentioned. Rapper parody. Yeah. I'd say rate. Yeah. Oh. oh, rapper parody. No, rapper parody. Oh. Slate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, slate, slate, slate. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I misunderstood the question. Slate. Yeah, slate. Sorry. Um, if you were on a road trip. Somewhere, yes. I've got someone on the album called Road Trip. Sorry, carry on. And you could have anyone in the car with you. Who would it be and why? Oh, uh, uh, we spoke about him earlier. I'd say Damon Albarn for the musical wisdom. Yeah, or, or Freddie Mercury if he was still alive. And failing that, Roger Taylor, who's the drummer from Queen, for the musical wisdom. Although I'd probably crash because I'd be so in awe of him. <laughs> Song, think of it any song that you like that you wish you'd written. Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody by right. Queen. What really inspires me about Bohemian Rhapsody is, you know, I'm a little bit of a Queen geek and I've seen a lot of documentaries. And Freddie Mercury wrote Bohemian Rhapsody yeah, yeah, yeah. surrounded by people, even within the band, and they admit this, surrounded by people that are saying the song will not work. The song is too long, radio will not play it, um, Queen members 
stormed out in the um, music, in the recording session saying what the hell is this opera about, this is nonsense, it's not going to make it and it really defied all odds because Bangor is actually one of the biggest songs in musical history now and I think someone that's got that amount of balls to write a song that was totally different from anything else that's ever been written I had to have this book for, so the Human Rights Today, the Human Rights Today, yeah, I'd say yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brilliant song, you know, it, the song's 40 years old mm -hmm. and it is played as commonly now as it probably was back in the day. And as I said, I, you know, I, I think that's a huge respect to Freddie Mercury because everyone around him was just trying to persuade him to make him write the song and he ignored everyone and went through stuff and things and we it now. Uh, I'd like to achieve, well, I think... Last year, if I was asked, I'd say put out an album. I think now I'm doing that. I think it's just putting out more music in some way. So whether that's solo material or working with projects, but just keep on doing music and hoping that people like it. Really, I know that sounds a little bit boring, but that's yeah, just keep on putting music and doing, perhaps doing some more collaborations. I would say, but my main aim was to put an album out. I'm kind of doing that now. It's out on Monday, and I think it's just. Continuing the whole musical journey through collaborations, projects, and that's another solo album. We'll see. Oh God, I'd like to do some collaborations with electro type people, and I'm not saying they'd necessarily want to work with me, but people like Chains and Status, Clean Bandit, Pants Off, or Dodger, things like that. I think would be absolutely amazing. But whether or not that will happen, I don't know. You know, I'm kind of yeah, never know. I think I'm just a, like a small kind of fish in the ocean in their kind of world. So. Yeah, yeah, so that would be my, uh, that would be my interest. Perhaps after this album is kind of out promoted and kind of milking what you can be, doing some more collaborations. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you all. Hope you enjoyed the interview.